Well, give me a kiss, bro. Just go with Dylan. We got something to talk about today. Hey, yo, hey. Let's talk about our love life. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. We come here to get attacked, yo. Non existent at the moment. Let's yeah. go. All right. Let, let's do this. Let's do the dance. Let's thing. do this. Man. Burr, 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 burr. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yo, it toasts the life podcast, bro. We are back. Never yes, missing sir. a Monday. So if you're listening to this, we're either waking up with y'all. Probably not. We're probably still asleep. Good but, as fuck. Nah, I'm awake. I'm awake. <laughs> but this episode is out. So I want to thank everybody listening, whether you're driving, getting ready for work, getting ready for the day, waking up your kids for school, whatever it is. Appreciate you guys. Waking up next to the Toxica or the Toxico. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. oh yeah. So today's internal pod, obviously I'm your one of your hosts, Dusko. Yes, sir. Everybody's favorite, Mr. Yeah, Dylan over know, there. The bucket hat. <laughs> the bucket hat bucket guys. Hat, so what does the bucket hat have bucket to do? Because you wear the bucket, bucket hat. hat. CEO is yes, on sir. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna rock it today with the fit. Uh, yeah. Today he's wearing his Coachella fit. <laughs> yes, sir. You'll see this. Pre-game. This, is, this is the pre the pre Coachella. Coachella fit. Right Wait, can I say the introduction? Look at oh, you guys, man. Look at you guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just because I already said your name for you're crazy right now. But out of pocket. usually this guy is behind the camera, but today he's sitting in with us, Mr. Jose, aka Pepe in the house, yes, baby. Sir. Burr, 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 burr. And we I don't think we've ever given this man his flowers, but to the man who's filling in right now because obviously Jose No Way is always late. You invite him anywhere. He's, he's not making late. it on time. He'll probably show up with alcohol, but he's late. <laughs> but to the man that gave us an opportunity and taking a chance on us in the last, like, fucking eight months, seven months. We've been riding, riding along. We've been night. riding this a long way, but Mr. Joaquin in the house, baby. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. We outside. The man, the myth, nah, the motherfucking we inside. We inside. We inside. We, inside. we inside. But, uh, man, how we all doing? How you guys doing? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Woke great. up a little hungover, great. but I feel great now. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah, yeah. You good? Everybody's good. Same, man. So the I know we're gonna try to make some of these internal podcasts a little bit more frequent because just man, recap, recap on life, recap of what's been happening the last that part. The what is it? Month four already in the year. So this, as I said on the stories, if you guys are following, subscribe to YouTube, follow on TikTok, IG, follow all the pages are right there. But this is today a audience-based podcast. Yes, so sir. So we ask questions to the audience. All right. right. They, they came back with some questions that they they wanted mm. to, to ask us, and we're going to give them our best advice. If we've personally dealt with this, cool, say from experience. And if we haven't, then give whatever best advice you can probably, you can probably give. That y'all gonna end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Talking from experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> deny, disclaimer, deny, deny. Disclaimer. This deny is just it. our opinion. Plead the four. This is just Don't our talk opinion. to the cops. So I'm assuming this person, because it was through the anonymous, has Ooh. siblings. Okay. The first question is toxic siblings always play victims. So it's not really a question, but it's kind of like probably going through a situation. Mm-hmm. But I would say, is. Having siblings that maybe isn't into the same things as you are, but it's probably the most chiqueado or the favorite. Does it become, does, does, is there a way that that becomes toxic or what does toxic may mean to, to you guys? Mm, I'm the middle child, so I'm like, I'm, I'm like, eh. Oh, you're the one no one wants. <laughs> a, I was the accident of the group, bro. <laughs> um, damn. I wouldn't call it toxic. Um, obviously, if you have siblings, one of those siblings is going to be the favorite one. And not just because your parents, like, that's their favorite child. But it's like the firstborn is always, like, you know, special to the parents. Yeah. And not Terribly. only that, I mean, sometimes uh, it's always one out of the kids that is over is an overachiever, has good grades and stuff. That can also be a favorite. It doesn't have to be the first child, but I wouldn't call it toxic. I would just say it it makes you view things differently. Yeah. You it know? It depends, too, what we're looking at, too, because it could be, like, a, a family structure. Because usually, especially, like, in minority, particularly Hispanic families, mm-hmm. you always have the son being the favorite. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So... 
you could look at it like that, or it could just be like if they're all boys and you got like the middle child is usually like the wild one. The first one's usually the super responsible one that has to take care of everybody, and the young one's the one that gets away with everything. True, true, true. You know what the funny <laughs> thing is though, I'm the oldest one. Uh-huh. I'm the only son, and like I'm not the favorite. My <laughs> sister's the <laughs> yeah, favorite, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't know. I mean, it didn't work out for me. Yeah. But, but I think like because of the being the oldest one. You are set, like, right away, as soon as you're born, you're set with expectations. My firstborn is the one that's going to retire us early. <laughs> is the one that retire us early. <laughs> retire us early oh, do, good sure. in, do good in school and graduating and become a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. And not repeat the cycle yeah. that we had to go through when, you know, as parents, like, that they had to go through when, you know, with them growing up. But then you turn out the total opposite of what they expected, and they're just like, <laughs> "Te salió un desmadre." ¿Qué pasó? Where did I go wrong? Do you think that like that's the case though? Like, yeah, because you're the firstborn, you ha- they, you have a high expectation yeah. of what you should be. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's hard being the firstborn because it you, is. You have the weight of your family on your shoulders. You know what I'm saying? I think if especially especially if you come from like a toxic family like your parents aren't really doing that well and your little brothers and sisters look up to you to be that role model you know so you really got that weight of your whole family on your shoulders yeah that's it true. happens cuz i mean it kind of happened to me yeah. my sister ended up having her family and shit and mm-hmm. i had to pretty much take over and help my parents out you know yeah yeah man so i didn't really have a choice Dang. like i maybe i didn't want to be the one so to provider. retire them. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to retire myself, but yeah, I right. had to. I had to. It, it, it just ends up being on what kind of pressure you're, you're upon, right, where you're not allowed to make mistakes because the first mistake you make, they hang you for it. Yeah. Like yeah. any little mistake you make, whether you had a bad grade, you didn't show up to a job, or the job isn't doing, going well, or school isn't going well. Yeah. You know, you get hanged for that. So what kind of encouragement do you get when you're growing up as a fir- as the oldest? Now, nah, well, I'm always a fuck up. Yeah. You know, there's nothing I'm doing that's right. If you look at it from the bright side, um, obviously, like I said, I'm the male child. I always learn from the fuck ups from my brother. Mm. <laughs> mm. So Smart. you switch that up. And obviously, the first born son is always going to fuck up no matter what. Yeah. He has to fuck up. Can't relate. But can't he's like, can't <laughs> I was but, that, I was that golden child. I mean, there you go, love that. Just viewing and seeing all the things that my brother fucked up on, it kind of gave me kind of like, oh shit, I'm not supposed to do that. I should do it differently. Yeah. He did it like that. All right, let's see the outcome of this. You know, this yeah. other opportunity. No, one hundred percent. They say, uh, what, how does that saying go? It's um, smart men learn from their mistake. Wise men learn from the mistakes of others. So. Ooh. That's the goal. Fuck. Yeah. Podcast done, guys. Let's go. Uh, we we up, done. We done. Wrap it up. Thank you for joining that, in. That way we don't have to don't pay for no hours. <laughs> like, subscribe. <laughs> you know, um, hell yeah. If I hope you guys, it answered. It wasn't, again, it wasn't a question. I think it was a statement. But I hope that answered whoever asked that that question. Second one. This one. Oh, we're gonna, it's going to be Damn, this is going good, this bro. It's going to get deep. All right. Take this. Let it sink in. How to stop. How to stop always being someone's ride or die? Huh. So, but <laughs> look, that, look, what, look what, at everybody what, taking a breath. <laughs> I'm like, God, God, like <sighs> so how to stop being somebody's ride or die? Like relationship wise, or like somebody has like attachment issues? Well, let, I think that, let's talk about it in both ways. Relationship wise, in boyfriend, girlfriend, or, or husband and wife, or even as a relationship as friendships. That's true. Because ride or die, like, I'm, I'm going to be like, oh, well, these guys are my ride or dies right here. Yeah. Right? But if, if I know they're being toxic to my life, mm-hmm. how do I stop being that for them when they were there for me when I first started? Yeah. yeah. The way I'm seeing it is, like, it's probably somebody that's ride or die for somebody that's not ride or die for them. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know? That is right. Mm-hmm. So, like, somebody's, like, breaking their back to make sure this person is happy, is, you know, has everything that they need and want, and then the other person's probably out dogging, you know what I'm saying? Like, doing whatever they want to do, probably sleeping with other people, all that. Ooh. What about friendship, though? Friendship-wise? You cut them off. I mean, look, I'm not going to name <laughs> names, because, you know. <laughs> Dang, like, hey, hey, you know. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple. I have, hey, yeah, I have I went, but the only one that's ever hurt was my one ride or die. Like, I've known that person for, what, 
maybe 25 years. So that's a long time. That's a and uh, I realized that person was just using me. Like, literally, no matter what, just using me. The worst. And I didn't. And the thing is, is like, I thought I was being used, right? Because you kind of you kind of know. Mm-hmm. But there just comes a time where it's just like, you've had enough. Yeah. I asked that person for a favor after I've had done Everything. her countless amount of favors. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't reciprocated. That part. So once that happened, once I realized I was wasting my time. I said, I'm done. Is this a plutonic relationship? Like friendship, friendship? It was just friendship, like, friendship, yeah. Or like friendship, friendship. Friendship, friendship. friendship, friendship. friendship, friendship. No, no, like, yeah, friendship, nah, friendship. like, like no, a that legit sucks, friendship. Though, that sucks, though, because people like that, you know, when you have good energy and you're just that type of person where, like, you're magnetic, people will leech onto that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it happens to a lot of people where, like, people give, give, give and never, you know, stop giving. And people... Pe- People dog that. People see that. You know, there's predators. There's energy predators. You know what I'm saying? Those vampires that just leech onto you. And if they see you give and give and give, they just keep taking and taking and taking, you know? And then people prey on that. People watch for that. Yeah, I think that to f- to figure out and get to that point of when to let go, it, it takes a certain part of your life to really get to that point where you're watching it from a third-person view now. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's you're living, in, you're living in the moment, but you're watching it from a third-person so that's meaning where you're there with that person, but you're seeing it like exactly what it is for. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, why didn't you show up to when I needed some help, yeah. or when I needed advice, or when you know I was out in bed? And I, I, I believe everybody listening in, everybody knows when someone, some of, their, some of them is close to them, is down in bed when either they're not around, they're not communicating as they usually do, they're posting sad shit, or they're just not posting at all. Yeah. And it takes that little effort. And I, I'm glad what with, with this one came on, too, because there, there's a situation that's happening. And it's like, bro, like, this, my guy had his birthday party, bro, hundreds of people. That situation happened. Oh, no. Where are the hundreds of people? And the conversation we have now is it's time to let go. Yeah. All those people that were once there, Nobody. now they're now they're not here when everything is shining and up. Yeah, yeah. Hey, once it's back up there... Psh, Hey, you're not invited no more. Yeah, yeah. Now with that guest That's list right. turned from 100 to private guest list, 10 people or yeah, less, right. whatever yeah. it is. Uh, but um, I know I've Dylan been, been Dylan been been sitting on this. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, I've been I've been thinking. I've been thinking. I've been trying oh, to man. find. Uh, how do you stop that, Dylan? How do you stop being that person for the person that's not there for you? I feel like you stop for that person when. You guys show up at the same door, but you're the only one that has the key to get into that door. Love that. You know? <laughs> wow. All right. Exactly. Damn. <laughs> you guys show up to the same fucking door, and you're the only motherfucker that fits in there. Because his ego, his selfishness just float, like bloated him enough to not get through that door. Facts. You know? Yeah. So you're the only one that has the key, or you're the only one that benefits from what's on the other side of that door. So, 100%. that's that's what I think. It's just you have to really be aware of your surroundings and who's at that dinner table with you. Who are you? Who are you eating with every Sunday night? Yeah, no, right, one hundred percent. What's that Mexican saying? It's uh, mejor solo dolo que mal acompañado. Uh, say, say it one more time. Say it one more time. Mejor solo dolo que mal acompañado. Oh, okay. I thought I heard you wrong with that. No sabo kid. I heard you wrong. You travel faster when you travel light. You know what I'm saying? And not exactly. everybody's going to get to the top with you. Damn. You know? I love that. Hey. Damn. My God. My hey. God. Hey. This, this, Sorry, this, can, this cannot go over people's heads, bro, because we are not just speaking beca- speaking on these topics because it's a question. We're speaking on these topics because we can relate to this. Exactly. You know, we all had to let go of certain individuals because, like I've told Dylan before, there's certain individuals that we couldn't save anymore. Yep, as much right. as I want to save you, I'm sorry, I can't no more because if I try to save you, then I'm going to drown. That part and I, I can't do that, that no part, more. Yep, yep. I'm not going to let go and, and put up for debate and cost my peace of mind. Yeah. My shit is valuable now. Yeah. And if I got to jeopardize that because I need to save you, Sorry, I cannot do that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's just finding out when when that time is. Yeah. And maybe right now it's not that time for those people. But 
you know, you're going to realize you're going to find yourself in a position where you're just going to be like, I'm done with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So stop gossiping to your other friend about this friend <laughs> that you're helping because you can't, you know, none of that shit don't work. Yeah. If you feel a certain way, you got to be straight up. Yeah. yeah. If, if that person means that much to you and you can be honest with them, yo, tell them. Yeah. Hey. Also, also, like, if you're being super ride or die for them, um, don't make them feel your presence and make them feel your absence. You know, if you're, like, doing that much for them, stop doing that much and they're going to feel that, you know, and they'll come running back. Like, if you're doing a lot, you got them used to you doing a lot, stop doing a lot, and they'll notice. But what's that word? You change. You change. No, but, I didn't uh, change. You no. changed. You changed, you changed a lot. Now a lot changed me. Oh. Yo, hey, yo. <laughs> People get mad when you uh, don't allow them to use you anymore. That's yeah. what it comes down yeah. to. Okay, but so how do we deal with this? How do you deal with you changing because you had to take care of your personal self, you had to take care of your energy and protect your energy. How do you deal with those same people that once were abusing that power mm-hmm. to come and be like, yo, that fool changed. Hey, yeah. you changed. Yeah, big time, you got to reintroduce yourself a lot of the time. You know, who you were five years ago isn't who you are today, and you mm. constantly have to continue to evolve and yes. reintroduce yourself. Because you, you teach people how to treat you. You know, you allow behavior, and they learn that. So you teach people, like, you teach people whether they can scream at you or not, or they got to talk to you with respect or not. You teach people how to treat you, and that's how that kind of boils down. So you have to reintroduce yourself and, like, let people know, like, oh, that used to be how you talk to me, but that's not how you talk to me now. Yeah. You know, so you got to reintroduce yourself and, and learn how to shed skin. I think like every two, maybe three to five years, you should be a completely different person with new friends, new energy, like move different. Some people are going to be your ride or dies for life, but doesn't mean you got to ride with them every single day. You know, you're going to keep growing if you're about growing. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you don't stay stagnant and you're about doing more with your life, you're going to constantly be rotating um, new friends, and it's not that you're fake, it's that you're just, you're just trying to move. You got, a, mm. you got a destination, you have somewhere to be, and you just got to move. Again, you travel faster when you travel light. Ooh, that's that part, bro. <laughs> exactly. You, you summed it up for all of us, bro. I think we're... You th- we think we're good on, on that question? I feel I like we're good so. on that question. He summed it up. I'm pretty sure he summed it up. Yeah. I, I think uh, an actual... A good topic that is probably going to... It's probably going to hurt a couple people. Ooh. No, and and I think we deal with this, and I don't I don't want to just keep it to Hispanic culture, and his, you know, because we deal with the with the certain the certain events, certain trauma, certain certain things in our families that we're bringing to light, and that's what we do. But in this general aspect, one of the questions I won't name who it was, but the topic is toxic family. Damn. Dot 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 toxic moms. Not moms. You coming at moms? Damn. <laughs> Why after moms, yo? Yeah, yeah. Who coming at moms? Hey, like but, that? And I've I've heard of instances of people where their parents, their mom, or even dad, is toxic. In the hey, if you have a hundred dollars, hey, you're not gonna help me out. I'm your parent. I'm your dad. Yeah, yeah, I'm your yeah. mom. No, there's so many, there's so many parents that are toxic. You know, a lot of us are having kids and we're not even ready to have kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, there's some toxic, there's some toxic dads and toxic moms, but it's a love hate. And, and, and when do you, where do you draw the line? Like, where is the line? Like how much abuse do you allow because he's your mom? Do you just let them abuse you? Like that it's a, it's definitely a gray area. I know that's not the case with your parents cause your parents are amazing. You my, know, shout out your parents. My parents, um, I but have, my parents are not toxic, but, at all, but figuratively, really? right? Figuratively is that I, I love my parents. Parents are amazing. So I can't really speak on, like, toxic parents, right? Yeah. Because if you're Let on the... Let me handle this one. Yeah, yeah, go, oh, go for it, bro. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to stay quiet and listen to this. I love mom. you, but... <laughs> but. If, you're, if you're on the bright side of, of things, like, some of our parents, how D- Dylan has said, gave everything possible for in order for us to, to run while they mm-hmm. walked and crawled. My, my you know, parents and, and it's tough. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely a thing. I mean, so particularly for mothers, like... A lot of us are raised by single mothers, you know mm. what I'm saying? Um, no matter what color or creed you are, there seems to be a lot of single mothers out there nowadays, um, whatever that says about us men. But nonetheless, um, a lot of single mothers out there, and it's hard to be mad at them because they're really trying their best with what they had at that point in time. Yeah. Does that excuse them from their toxicity? You know, mm. you know it, it's hard to say. And yeah. there's, yeah. you know, there's moms that... that 
working three jobs and then there's moms that aren't working no jobs you know what i'm saying like what it's just a very touchy gray area particularly for me because i was raised by a single by a single mom and um she worked three jobs she was really never there but that also built bad character for me because i was you know always kind of having to do for myself and for myself you know and you know through all that now i'm a business owner i'm a homeowner and i think i learned a lot of these a lot of these um skills that i learned were from like raising myself you know so you know she did her best and i can't be mad at her but you know she has her flaws but don't we all hey that's that man that's that's that man bro that's that man again (laughs) that's j.o queen right there that's j.o queen (laughs) right there that's joaquin right there um but for for you two, for for us, that how you, how you said, mm-hmm. we got you know lucky. You know, I got, yeah. We got we got lucky with with parents like this, and maybe they didn't have it, didn't have a lot. Maybe they were around more and didn't have enough, but they taught us a lot, right? Like I remember day in, bro, day in day out. When I was growing up, my dad was working because he had to, but my mom was at the bus stops with me to go travel to go play soccer. Or traveling with me in taxis because we had to show up to a tournament while everybody else had mom and dad there supporting. Yeah. I had my mom here supporting me. And as a young kid, I didn't know, but I had my dad supporting me on the others on yeah. the other side. Yeah. Right? Like financially kind Financially, of, yeah, bro, yeah, like think about now. this. As a as as a Hispanic trying to become a entrepreneur, my dad traveled, taking me and my mom all the way to Bakersfield. At four in the morning, five in the morning, That's dropping us off, coming all the way back to go to work. Man. And it was, oh, where's your dad? Well, he had to go to work. Oh. Yeah. And shout out my cousins. My cousins live up north and they showed up and they drove us around. But, you know, some parents are there and some parents can't be there. But to deal with, you know, to the topic, the good thing, the good thing about having both parents there, what what would you say before we get to the set, the bad side of this? Um, my dad, my dad really worked a lot. Um, my both of my parents are immigrants. My mom would have us transporting in bus. Mm. My mom, uh, if, you, if for y'all that don't know, my mom crossed the border with my sister in her stomach, pregnant. No mm. You know, she she crossed that river. She crossed the border. Um. So once we got here, the only way to transport was on bus. And for y'all that have kids, if you think one kid is enough to get on the bus, my, my mom was dealing with three kids at a time. Yeah. On the bus. And then dealing with you, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was I was a I was a very I was I was a very calm kid. I just I think what well, most of y'all that, that that know me, I'm pretty I'm pretty mature. Yeah. Um I've been mature mm. since you know mm. <laughs> he's like mm. Uh, I'm, I, that's one of the reasons why I matured at a, at a young age because I saw what my mom was going through, and I try to help her out whatever I can. My brother was fucking this yeah. My sister I couldn't talk about much because she was a kid. She was she was a baby. Yeah. So obviously babies do their things, you know. Yeah. So I learned a lot from that. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna try to help him out, my mom or whatever I, I can, you know. But um, my dad worked a lot. He did a lot of welding jobs. He um. After he finished with the welding job, he would go and officiate soccer games. So he would get home very, very frustrated, very, very mad. Obviously, from work, from job to job, stressed. Like yeah, stressed. Yeah. But my dad always came home and put that mask on of like, I'm a happy motherfucker, you know? Love that. So he was very proud of his, of his family. And whatever soccer game I had, whatever, um, uh, like, award I won at school or something. One of my parents was always there. Yeah, that's solid. You know, my mom was very involved with us being in school. She uh, she even was like a com- like head of a committee and something at school. Yeah. She was the person that would like do meetups with the principal, have coffee with the principal, type of stuff. Oh, where like, like yeah, yeah, my mom was. My like mom that. was like, very my, very. My you second know? year. Um, hate to interrupt. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> but like, yeah, <laughs> my my mom was very. My mom was a mom at a very young age, bro. What age? And I respected a lot from her. Um, I think it was 18. Oh, where, yeah. 18. Oh, if I'm not wrong, 18. That's why a lot of people that know my mom, they're like, dude, your mom's the youngest fuck. Like, your mom looks young. And I'm like, yeah, she's, she's young. You know, she was, yeah. 
she was mom at a pretty young age. So I respect my parents a lot. And I thank my parents a lot for, you know, the not toxicity that they gave me. Yeah. And the freedom and boundaries that I have right now with them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, know? you learn a lot from your parents. Obviously, you're a mirror, you're a mirror of your parents. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, to your point, you were talking about, you know, the benefits of having both parents. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's... You have to have that balance. You know, if you have good parents, you have that perfect balance. You know, your dad will teach you a little bit of discipline to delay gratification and so that you put in that work, you know, and your exactly. mom will teach you love and will teach you to be affectionate and teach you to be in tune with your emotions, you know. So you, you have that balance when you have two parents. Um, one thing that I did want to say is that I always pose this question, and it's a rhetorical question, and it's a, is it better to grow up with a bad dad or no dad? You know, and rhetorical in a sense that it's it's better to grow up without those poor influences. Um, like, let's say, you know, again, speaking from my own perspective and my own experience, having come from a single mother household, it's the my dad, you know, he he was a character, you know, he um, he would it was everything, you know, everything bad that you can imagine a male would be. He was that. And um, so I think that because he wasn't in the picture. I was able to blossom per se or like become a different person. Um, and I put an example up because my cousins were raised um, by my uncles, of course, and my uncles, drug dealers and all this stuff. They grew up a certain way because they had that example in their home every day. So they be, they grew up like them because that's my dad. And, you know, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But when there's no tree there, then the apple would roam freely. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. God damn. Just on quotes, on quotes, on quotes. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I, so, again, um, to, to speak about like parents and, and the dynamics of the family structure. It's tough. To kind of answer your question, um, like you said, obviously Hispanic dads in general, they show you tough love, bro. Yep. They really show you tough love. So I'd say grow up with a you know, like very strict, hard, tough dad. They're not that at all, bro. Because that will teach you a lot of, you know, maturity, a lot of yeah. self-respect, a lot of, you know, uh, I'm trying to find the freaking word. Um, damn. Uh, I already said mature, right? Maturity? Yeah. Did I say that? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I, I, to answer your question, I'd say a very strict, hard-loving dad, you can say. Agreed. Toxic parents. Is there... Benefit of having both parents in your life and the advice if you have a toxic parent like that, mom or dad, or even both. Yeah. I agreed, you, with, I agreed with having both. I think it, it, at least for me, it worked out. Yeah. Um, for years, I resented my dad, and I thought it might have been better to not have a dad. Yep. But the older I got, the more I realized, hey, you know what? That taught me a lot. Yeah. Mm. Like... It taught me how to be a dad, even though I'm not a dad right now. Yeah. So it's like, what did I want growing up? That whenever I do have kids, I know what to do and what not to do. What yeah. didn't I like about my dad? Yeah. I'm not going to make those mistakes again. Yeah. Uh, that's learning from I mean, your life. Learning from your parents' mistakes. And your parents' mistakes and... And the thing is, is they didn't see them as mistakes. It's just what they knew. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know it's so did. crazy, bro, because when you talk to parents, you know, when you tell them, like, mom, like, mom, dad, like, why did you do, do this? Mijo, is this, it's, it, it's lo único que, que sabía. Es que así me criaron. Así That's me, how they así raised me. Bro, yeah. I, I swear to you, and this is, like, for everybody that is Latino, Hispanic, you know, or even just, burr, burr, burr. just, just, just the... A man, bro. If you're the only boy in your family or you're the oldest, whatever the case is, I promise you, if you go up to your dad and you tell him, Dad, I love you. Oh, no. It's going to hurt. It's, he's going to it's going to it's going to come in a certain way where they're just going to be like. Like emotional. Because they've never gotten that type of emotion in, know, in return. He said, I ain't never doing that. I said, I said I did it, and it didn't work out. <laughs> so he got me fucked up. He that you stupid. I you said, like, I did it, and he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, it, no, no I, 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 meant, I meant like, Watch, no, them, but it's true. I'm going to be a, I hope my dad answers. 
No, he didn't. Look at that voicemail. Damn. No, my dad got, got me blind. It would be the same. It would be the same. My dad got me blind. Damn. Hey, dad, if you're watching this, no. But he's like blind. What? I swear, talking to my dad and telling him I love you and I'm proud of you, bro, to him, it started making him cry. It's like, all I wanted was the best for you. Mm-hmm. Yo, yo lo único que quería es para superar lo que yo viví para que tú nunca los sufrieras. Yeah. It's like, damn, bro, like, how do I do this now? And once you realize that that's what they wanted for you, yeah. and they weren't just being dicks, yeah. it changes your mentality. It changes. Because I resented my dad did. for not showing up. Yeah. I resented my dad for even that simple, for not telling me I love you. Yeah. I, I resented mean, him for years. That, that's yeah. big, though. That's big. But, but once you realize, hey, he did fucking love me, mm-hmm. you know, mm. in his own way. In his own way. Yeah. Like we said earlier, tough love, bro. Yeah. They, yeah. Our dads, and maybe moms, if they were single moms, right, they, they did what they could with what they had. They loved us the only way they ever taught. They ever got taught what love was. Yeah. 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 If it was exactly. tough love, then that's how they knew how to love. That's real if, life, If though. it was embracing and supporting, then they do that and more. I mean, also, I mean, I want to touch on, on generational trauma, you know, to talk about generational trauma in a sense that your parents, you know, when you know better, you do better. But when you don't, you just keep repeating the cycle, you know, and a lot of our, you know, when you come from lower income, you know, poor families of color, there is generational trauma. You know what I'm saying? Like your dad's dad's dad. You know, but, but when out of your mom or look, his, here, you know, here, and it just here, gets passed here's down. my dad. Oh, he called back. Hello. Hey. Hey, you know what I'm saying? See, don't end that. Ah, ahí con ahí tomando unas chelas. Acabo de llegar apenas. No, puro tráfico. Hey, um, no, lo más, lo más, lo más te hablaba porque te quiero decir que que I love you y te agradezco todo por lo que haces por mí. Lo que has hecho por mí. ¿Y eso? ¿Por qué es tan sentimental ahora? No, nomás, nomás se quería recordar, pues. Porque aquí nomás estaba pensando y dije, no, pues mi papá me, me enseñó mucho y hizo lo, que, hizo lo que pudo con lo que tenía y te, te amo, te agradezco todo. Ya sabes ahí hasta el final. All right, I love you. Love you. All right, bye bye. Damn. God damn. Love I'm, that, I'm, a, I'm a fuck. That's perfect. Yo también quiero llorar. Sí. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here crying already, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. I'm drinking Shit. tequila, oh. bro. Don't do this to me right now. <laughs> bro, I'm not gonna lie. Damn. If I call my dad right now, I tell him my dad's gonna start crying. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be yeah, honest. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Do it. Yeah, hey, like it's, do a, it. it's a healing type of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> call your dad and tell him you love him. What? Let's my, do it. My dad's. My dad's. My dad's first call of all, him, bro. Call him. Call I've, him. I've never. I've never told my dad to right. be fucked. So do it. My dad's gonna be it, tripping. Here you are. And here you know that is beautiful and powerful because he's probably he does need to hear that. You know, as a human and as a man that's made mistakes. Should I call? Should I call? He needs to hear that. Should I call my mom so she can put my dad on the phone so they can both hear? Or do you just not tell your dad? Your dad. Your dad. That's my dad, wait, wait, my dad doesn't answer phones. Dad at the beginning? Shit, well, now we're talking about I can, that. I can tell them both. I can tell them both. I can no. just, they're always talking. Call, 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 call your dad. Call your dad. It'll be more intimate if yeah. you just talk to one of them. There's a bitch. <laughs> nah, just say, yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. It's a healing podcast here, yeah, guys. Because, yeah, it's a healing. Today, <laughs> today we're having oh, a healing that episode. That one working? That one good? <laughs> Imagine it Not wasn't. It's not All right, let me check. Let me. It let me, hasn't been recording the whole let me, time. Let me be toxic. Let me see where my dad's at. Hold on, I got his location, y'all. Call. Let me see. Hold on, let me see what that person is. Just call. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. I'm not backing up. I'm not backing up. Yeah, out. just call. Oh, no, no, no. My dad's at Whittier Narrows. He's, he's working right now. Call. Oh, I called him last time. You swear he's not going to I called him up. last time. <laughs> he's, he's, he's working right okay, now. Okay, just call. Call him. Right, or leave a voice message at least. <laughs> answer. Let's see, let's see. At least he'll call you back if he doesn't answer. He's like, ¿Qué quieres, hijo de tu puta madre? 
W, my dad. Si ya sabes, he answers. Si, <laughs> if he si, answers. Si ya sabes que estoy trabajando, cabrón, ¿por qué llamas, cabrón? ¿Cuánto chingas es casi, No, me like, like, ¿cómo, ¿cómo chilla la niña? Y dijo, ¿estás en la casa ahí? No, acá estaba en Los Ángeles, ¿por qué? ¿Cómo fuiste al podcast? Sí, aquí estoy en el podcast, aquí te están oyendo todos. <laughs> Pues fui mucho más caro si vas a la casa y ahí está la llave, ya sé. Ok, está bien. No, my working. My dad didn't answer. My dad's working. He's gonna call, he didn't answer him on the first okay. time. Either. I'll, yo, put, I'll put yo it on. Cuando, cuando llego. Like, yo, just get his homeboy calls back. Yo, my <laughs> mom's phone is always on do not disturb. <laughs> she never picks up. Shit. Pinche toxica. <laughs> nah. <laughs> it's, that, it's that type of healing, man. Shit is always but on do not disturb. Any, anything to add about parents? Mm. Just appreciate them. Yeah, appreciate Ooh. them. You know, appreciate every, your everybody parents. Everybody does what they can. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But Sometimes. honestly... A, after a certain age, and I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna say a certain age, but after a certain age, you gotta be responsible for the way you feel about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it is, it is primitive of us to want accept acceptance from the people around us, like parents and stuff and nice. friends. But at a certain point in time, you gotta learn to, to love yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do want, you, yeah, your parents will always have a favorite because they're human and they they make errors, and you know all. All humans come with errors, but at some point in time, you can't rely on their love. You have to learn to love yourself, and at some point in time, you, you got to hit that age where it's like it's on you to love you, even if your parents are toxic, even if your siblings are toxic, even if all your friends are toxic. There has to come a point in time where you choose to love yourself, and if that means separating yourself from your family, from your friends, whatever it takes, love yourself. That's the same. Hey, that's it. That's the exit fucking call right there. We finally have Jose in the fucking Joaquin. Burr, 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 switch out. Love y'all. Let's go, Jose. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you for being with us, bro. Thank you for chatting one. with us, y'all. Hey, that's the man, Joaquin. Joaquin. If you need a fucking space, you make sure you check out him in Pure Space. If you need a personal trainer, you already know. Personal trainer, personal fucking pour drinker. That's Jose coming in. Look at him. Yo, Let's yo, go. Hey. He brings the water this water. time. Look at him. It's not water. It's not water. What it's is this? Water. Is this sea bone? Is this sea bone coming in? Yeah, hey, hey, I think we have sea bone in the house in there. Now. I don't know. Make sure you get the microphone right to you, my guy. Oh no! What was it? What was it like? Chuk, three, chuk. Two two days ago, um, you didn't pick up your shorts from my house, so I just wore them to the yeah, gym. Yeah, he wore his, he wore your short, the shorts that you le left at his house. <laughs> Bro, sure I, I felt like the strongest motherfucker ever, bro. No, you gave him oh, out. No. We gave him out right after. Oh, yeah, buff, I did, bro. All right. Bro, we're it. the same size. What do you mean? All right, here we go. This one's six, six, just, this is perfect six, enough six. for you coming in, my guy. All right. Feeling guilt about your success. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sheesh. Okay, well, I don't think I have the right to say that because I haven't fully known or fully accomplished my success or I don't know if I can speak for myself or for y'all but I feel like if you ever once reach your success I feel it's not that you feel guilty about others but it's at the end of the day it's the work you put in the work they didn't see you know and it's kind of like they only saw you when you're up there. They didn't see you praying at fucking night to to, to get those fucking, you know, those hours in to, you know, those sleepless hours. So I don't think it's like you feel guilty, but it's like I would say you feel guilty for them not trying hard enough to be up there with you. Exactly. Weird. Like a little piggyback. No, let, let's, go, let's go deeper in this. Oh, All the way in there. Oh. <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. <laughs> It's gonna, hey, it's gonna be like you're talking hey. elbow deep. <laughs> <laughs> elbow deep. Hey, every, every, everybody, it's, it's gonna be everybody like that, that driving just like, oh shit, my man. It's gonna be that one meme that the, the, the African dude's like, we don't have the potential for that. <laughs> He's like, guy. Oh man. Subscribe to the for the Patreon right here. You'll get big content. Keep uh, no, what I mean by that, you know, so it doesn't go over our head is do we feel guilty of our success for not being around or losing friends, not being around at loved ones' events, not being around in your day one's events or whatever it is because you had to take care of your profession, your journey. You know, we, we dealt with this the, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. First weekend that we went to San Diego, right? Yeah. I talked to you about that. Or there's even days where you got to go prep and you got to go train. And instead of coming out with the boys, you got to go and get to the gym because it's your day to live, yep. right? Same thing with you, to work. If you got to go and do work at this time because at this time is due and not, and not being able to get to certain events or even past that, not being fully mentally there while you're there. Because you're just so exhausted from what you just did. So do you, we feel guilty for succeeding and growing in our journey while losing out in events or in our loved ones? I think it's like a yes and no just because I try and find that balance of like obviously being here. Like I just came back from coaching like literally like an hour ago and I got stuck in LA traffic and stuff. But it's like... I wish I'll be drinking tequila with you guys. I wish I was drinking with you guys. I wish. I know we're going to do something after. I wish I can do that. But at least I'm here with you guys right now doing the important things, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So I try to find that happy medium. But sometimes I would say yes because finding that balance and being in two places at once exhausts myself. Like, I'm giving out for so much, for for so many of my athletes and for you guys, for the people who at least I want to prioritize. I just don't have time for myself or my mental capacity, I guess. Yeah. So it's like, yes and no. Like, I do feel guilty sometimes saying, hey, I can't do this. Hey, I got to do this. Or, But I feel good because I'm able to be successful in the way I'm doing in my business and also having the free time being here, right? Let's give it up for Jose, dog. Yeah. You fucking <laughs> full-time trainer, full-time shooter here with us on the pod, bro. And our day one that... That, man, is just doing everything. And how old are you again? Just turned 24. I'm getting a little old. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> we got two babies. Wait, you, wait, you, wait, you just turned 24? Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. bro. We l- Come on, bro. Look at this guy. Come hey, on. Hey, you gotta, hey, you got to remember, we had the whole buzz ball that weekend. Oh, he yeah. doesn't remember. Actually, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah you're, right, you're right, right. I had a whole I forgive you. The, the fat, the, it was in San Diego. I, I don't, I, it's not that I don't remember, <laughs> but. bigger than your head. Bro, I drank that shit myself. I was expecting for y'all to fucking drink. We something. did. And drink. We did. We we did. did. I was being selfish that day. Hey, we <laughs> did, but you were like, oh, you know what? I want fucking me. Oh, your turn. I'll do it for you. So, okay. How the around. fuck, how the oh, fuck no. are you? How are you? How is he older than me? How old are you? 20, I'm 23. Bro, I turned, he turns bro. 24 I like turned 24 months. in June, bro. All right, you're fine. You're fine. Right. <laughs> do you feel guilty or any sort of guilt? For working on your craft. Yeah. Yeah. I feel guilt every single day. Um, there's times that, well, I mean, obviously I work and then I went back to school, so I'm doing that. And then people don't know. Um, I got two nieces, one nephew. Yeah. And that's when I feel guilt when they want me to spend time with them, but I can't because I'm doing other things. So their parents work all the time. And I'm kind of like their, I guess, secondary parent. Like, I step in when their parents aren't there. Mm-hmm. So that's, I think that's the only times I feel guilt. When I can't be around for them, and they want me to be around for them. You know? So how, how, so how do we deal with this? So from, from my experience, is it tough? Yes, it's, it, it's tough. Oh, definitely. I, ha- I have my two kids, right? I got my family. And some days, I, I, as much as I want to be present... Yo, I got to be literally on this device right here yeah. for X amount of hours because I need to post. I need to send out an email. I need to look up a certain thing that just popped up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do I feel bad? Yeah. And I was just having this conversation yesterday. I was like, I get home at a certain time. And usually the time that I have with my kiddos, bro, I'm falling asleep because I have no more energy. Yep. And I'm trying to, like, I soup up in energy drinks. I, I try to stay awake. I do as much, but I just know, I personally know, I'd rather do this now, right now, so I can live the moment in the years to come and not save it for the next moment, not save it for the next right moment, because there's no right moment. Exactly. As much as we want to prepare and make this, oh, for the perfect moment in order to take this chance and opportunity, there's none. You got to make that moment. You got to make it. Mo- you got to make that. You personally got to decide when is that moment. Is it now or is it in a week from now? 
Or is it, did I pass this moment now and now I'm not going to do it because of X amount of time, whatever the case is. It's up to me and only me. And as much as I feel guilty, I'm sorry. So can I ask you a question? Shoot it. Aren't you afraid that you're going to miss out on something? Like, have you not missed on any of your children's, like, major milestones? I missed on my daughter walking her first steps. How was that? How did that feel? It hurts. It hurts. But, and I've, I, stand, I stand my ground on this, 10 toes, everything on it, my whole weight on it. I am doing the best that I can so that person can have whatever, whatever opportunity she needs when she has that time, when she gets to that time. And if I don't do this now, then when am I? What am I going to do? Not give up now and okay. be there? And, and, yeah, love and affection is what they need, the kids need. But my kids don't need to get passed down an apartment lease because I'm going about to die. They need, they need longevity. They don't need daddy's <coughs> debt of what he never paid onto my kids. Is no, here's your college fund, if that's what you decide. And it's bigger than that. It's not college fund anymore. It's, do you, want, do you want a business? What do you want to do with your life? Here it is. I feel you on that one. Now let's do this. So it, and, and shout out Mike Barron from San Diego, mm. the chosen ones. It takes that one person in a the, in the family generation to change it all up. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that's the black sheep of the family. Sometimes that's... That's the outcast because he is not there, because he is not present, because he is not emotionally present. But that's that person that when years to come, this all pays off, it's the one they all go to. And it's not because they need him. It's just because, hey, he's able to. Yo, so one day when this all pays off, when our journey pays off, hey, then we can pay off our parents' house. Maybe we can give our little siblings a car. A opportunity, a couple dollars here and there. It's like sacrifice a little bit for now so you can just be rewarded until after. Rewarded till later. Why not work for five years straight? Yeah, you may miss some things, but it's like work five years now and then you can have the rest of your life just, you know, have more time with your, the people that you love. You check, know? check this out. And th this is, and we're, we'll, we'll talk about this off the of camera regardless, but the Vegas trip, right? Mm -hmm. July, planning to go to Vegas. You're going to be in Vegas. We're His planning, smile, to, we're planning smile, to go yeah. to Vegas. We're planning to go to Vegas. Do we have fun? Yes, we always have fun. We post it. We let everybody into our life of what we do. But don't get it twisted. Look at all the rest of the, the content that we do. What is it first? It's work. You were just talking about, hey, who's in, who's in Vegas? Who can we tap in in Vegas, you know? And yeah. I'm going in for, like, for coaching purposes. And right. They're coming Obviously, in. Yeah, they have fun, but, like, we're talking about, yo, what can we, we were, Yeah, we literally said. We were talking about yeah, it. We during, literally uh, said, only way we're, we're getting to Vegas, if we can lock in a podcast with the owners, the owner of, what gym was this? Oh, Dragon's Lair? Dragon's Lair. The Flex? The gym? Flex Lair? I want to say yes, Flex something. I'm, I'm sorry. If Flex. I'm reading, but mm -hmm. I'll live with you. And then. There's Jay Cutler. Yep. There, I mean, there's there's an amount of people also in Vegas. But to my point is, only way we're going to a place is if it's business first, and we got to go to work. Again, some of these people, whether it's your baby daddy, whether it's your it's your man, your brother, whoever it is, people go and and play, but they don't do the work first. Exactly. And I, I've said it before. If this didn't do its job, the year that we came and do this whole thing. Okay, then be mad. It is what it is. Then I fucked up. Mm -hmm. But we've been putting in work. We've been putting in work. So don't neglect your work. Don't neglect what needs to be done. Why? Because it's there. It's an opportunity. Whatever you want to do with your life. You want to coach for the rest of your life? Cool. It's there. You you want to... My dad's calling me. It's time. It's time. It's time. Oh, Azure. God, Azure. Azure. I no wish break. I was drunk Azure. for this shit. Let's go. Let's see, Let's see what homeboy says. Chubule. No sabía que estabas trabajando, perdón. Está bien. Uh, no, pues solo te quería pues, llamar para decir que, que la verdad te quiero y gracias por, por todo lo que, que has hecho por nosotros. Um, y pues, pues sí, que te quiero mucho, que te amo y, y gracias, gracias por, 
por todo lo que me has enseñado, por todo lo que me has dado. Soy ya. Solo te quería llamar para decir eso. No, y me estás bromeando, ¿verdad? No, 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 y ni ando, no, neta, así, pues, ni ando, no, no ando pedo, no ando pedo, no, no, de veras, de veras, solo, no, he thinks I'm, he thinks I'm, I'm drunk, no, no, solo, así, de veras, de, de pues, de, pues, de compa, se puede decir, que, que, pues, no, pues, gracias, gracias, muchas gracias por todo, de. Cabrón, me vas a hacer llorar, güey. Ya lloró, ya lloró. Ya, yeah, pues, solo te quiero decir que te, que te quiero mucho. Gracias por todo lo que, que has hecho por mí. Gracias por todo lo que me has enseñado. Y, pues, has, hay, hay cosas ahí que, que no intencionalmente me has enseñado, pero he aprendido de ti. So, muchas gracias. He aprendido también, igual que, que tenemos que chingarle, pues, para agarrar lo que, lo que queramos en la vida. Y tú me has enseñado a... a Básicamente tener la familia perfecta por, en lo que me criaste. So, muchas gracias, Dad. Bueno, mi vida. Me da gusto irte, güey. Aunque sea de broma, cabrón. No, 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 no. No, 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 no es de broma, no es de broma. Sí, pues, así tú y yo, tú y yo así hablando. Dale, cabrón. Te espero en la noche. Sale, pues, ahí hablamos. Gracias, güey. Bye. Bye. No va a llegar en la noche. No va a llegar en la noche. He's gonna cry. He's, he's, not, coming, gonna cry. he's not coming back. I'm gonna cry, bro. I'm gonna no, no, he's crying. He's crying. He's crying. Yeah, he's crying. I would have cried. I would have hey, cried. For everybody watching right now, if you haven't done that to a parent, whether it's your dad or mom, you gotta go and do this right now, man. Take a time, pause this podcast. Go listen. Go give that call to that one person that taught you everything in your life. I promise you, it's gonna be a relief. I know this is this is my guy. This is my <laughs> ride or die, and he hasn't done this type of healing in forever. And I know he ain't going out tonight. He's going home. You know, <laughs> he's going home. <laughs> he's going out tonight. No, he's not. Why you lying? <laughs> yeah. Hey, proud of you, bro. Proud of oh, you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, I don't even know what the hell we were talking about because that moment there was what it was. <laughs> that moment there was what it was. <laughs> do you need a break? Do you need a break? You good? No, no, no. We're good. We rolling, bro. We rolling. Take a shot. Take a shot. Do we need, do we need shots? I can't drink. Ah. I can't drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 Oh man, this this is a whole, hey he did. This is a, this is a whole this is a whole different type of healing. That was so mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can tell the tone of his voice. You know my dad. Oh yeah, he was crying already. Yeah, my dad was. Oh, you gotta know him. I know. Yeah, yeah, I got to know him, and I know. Him. <laughs> He's like, like me vas a hacer llorar. No, that, that's what he was like. That's what I'm saying though, because he was like. He was, yeah, like, he was exhaling like super hard. Out this, like, oh, this, this is that that proven one of your parents. If they're the older generation immigrating from wherever they immigrated, probably never had that sentimental, emotional, I don't know, like em, guidance of what really love was and appreciation. It's only, they only knew what, uh, what they needed to know, which is work. I'm not there. I may be hated, but I love you because I'm paying the bills and I'm providing the house. That's all it is, bro. Like it's just it's it's life and the way the way things go, unfortunately, but fortunately that we're here as Hispanics, Latinos, breaking these barriers. And we're doing it now. And We, uh, Joaquin has said it earlier, and I've always said it, maybe this conversation isn't for you, but it is for those persons that are trying to heal. And it is for those persons that are, are trying to find the answer of how to go through life when you're not finding the answer of what you're looking at. And here we are breaking this. Four men trying to do this, trying to break that barrier, trying to change the world with one conversation at a time. You cannot be duplicated. You cannot be duplicated 
only replicators. <laughs> it happens. Dupes. You know what I'm saying? You know, you do you. You do what, whatever is best for you. And whatever works for you, you go. You make sure you go ahead and you run with it at 100 miles an hour, no matter if people come and support it, no matter if people come in and applaud for it, no, no matter if people come and see it, no matter if people come and share it. You keep going and you do this because you love it. And your payback will come at the time that you most need it, not at the time you wanted it. All that work's done behind closed doors. We just happen to record it. But all that work is done behind closed doors at night, you know, at the gym, at, at work, at whatever you're doing, editing, you know. And anything that you're doing is behind closed doors. No one's going to see it. They're just going to see the Try success it. and stuff like that. Facts. They only show. No. People only see what we show them. Yep. Exactly. They don't see what we do. Mm. We'll let you see you know, what back we want. End, you know? Exactly. But here at this podcast, here at this show, here at this movement, we let you see you everything. As most as we can, as much as we can. And... You guys judge us by the way you see us, and then until you meet us, then you be the judge of who you are. It's like it's, you do what you do, but you're going to attract the, like, the, peop- the people are going to come to you, like whether you like it or not, good or bad. You're just going to pick and choose who you're going to let in. You know? like, if you do you, you're going to have that same, same vibe coming back at you as well. Facts. For everybody watching and, and listening, um, again, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe. Make sure uh, you follow and comment. So, help the comment, algorithm. yeah, help out. It always helps out algorithm, as everybody knows. If you didn't know, now you know. Um, but comment if you like these internal podcasts. I've been enjoying these podcasts, especially because these are audience based. Yeah. This is an audience based podcast today. These are literally not our questions, these are all of your guys' questions. And we appreciate you guys uh, doing this for us. But here's, here's, we're, ending, we're getting to the end. The question is, how to cope with a continuous relationship knowing you cannot forgive the wrongs at the moment? Would you forgive eventually? Would forgiveness eventually come? Or is it just holding on? I feel like time fixes everything. And I'm not saying it's in a day or anything like that. It could take up your whole life. You, you could die and you'd be the same way, you know? But Damn, that's saying. dark. <laughs> <laughs> that's dark. <bizarre. Hey>, <laughs> Damn, my bro. guy. Whoa. You okay. All right. <laughs> All I'm saying it could be a very long time, but I feel like time heals everything. Like, if, say, like you're mourning somebody. Like, yeah, you're gonna be sad for like as as long as you want, as long as you can. But through time, it's gonna get a little bit easier just because you're going through the, the motions throughout the day and stuff. But you will always have that little bit of like little pain in your heart, but it's different with trying to heal from someone that's still alive. So it's like, I feel like time just heals every, anything. Okay, but do you, do you forgive the person? Like, if we're talking about partners, do you forgive the person and you continue to work on it? Or is it just holding on because you're accustomed to this? I think that's what it is, right? I mean, I feel like once, like you said, I feel like he's, he, well, he said, time heals everything, right? Mm-hmm. I think for me, it's time heals almost everything. Oh. One's trust is in question. Uh-huh. Like, that's it. I can't be with somebody that I don't trust personally, but that's just me. And that goes with relationships, like romantic relationships and friendships. Like, once I don't trust you, that's it. Because at, at the end of the day, like, I'm going to be questioning, like, is what you're telling me the truth or yeah. not? And yes. once that's once in the back of your mind, debate, yeah. you're just going to be questioning it no matter what. And it's like, if you, even if you do give them the second chance, are they changing because you told them or are they changing because that's their characteristic? Like, why would you do that in the first place? Like, yeah. just being untrustworthy, you know? <laughs> yes. Do, would you let go of something like that or not? Figuratively uh, speaking. No, it, <laughs> what, it's like figuratively speaking. Like I'm, I'm, You're asking the motherfucker that's been like a... Yeah, for sure. But, you know? but like here, here in this question again, it's, you know, people search for these answers. And um, for some odd reason, blessfully, we have an audience that is searching for an answer that we need to give them. So from, like, even for me, when I speak from experience, 
And I'll, I'll say this. Love prevails. I believe in that 100%. Mm-hmm. Love will, will show up in, at the right moment and, and whenever you need that reassurance. So if whatever wrong was done throughout that journey, if you love that person, you will forgive them because you see the future with them. And you know that, like, if you're going to forgive it, don't bring it up once again. And don't let that yep. past affect you in the now. Yep. And we said it before, don't think about the past because if you live in the past, then you're, not in the fu- you're not in the present. And if you think about the future, then you're not living in it right now. And if you're thinking about those two times, then what's happening now? You don't even know. You're not, you're not focused on that. You're thinking about 10 years in advance when, bro, we're right here. Mm-hmm. And if you're thinking about what was done six months ago, a year ago, yeah, it hurts you. Hard to forget. But can what happens right now reassure you the love that you need? And if that question right there, if that does not reassure you, then it's hard. As hard as it sounds, you have to let go. That's why I'm single. <laughs> Let's keep it real. That's why I'm single. If I don't trust you, I ain't gonna be with you. Let's keep it a bug. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my time or your time. Keep it a bug. If you there's, if there's no trust, hey, it is what it is. It kick is what rocks. it is. Next, that's kick, it. Girl, true, true. Kick rocks. How, I said this earlier. If my sanity and my emotional sanity is up for debate because I need to make you happy, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do that. It's not gonna happen. That's right. I care about me. And I need to be okay. I don't need you to be okay. I need you to be okay on you. I need to be okay and good for myself. It's like both parties need to love each other so you guys can love together. Then I said this like episodes ago. It's not a 50-50. It's 100 and 100. If I give you my 100%, you give me 100%, then we should be good, right? But if I'm doing the full 200 and you're only giving nothing or 150 and 50, then it's definitely not going to work. Then there's going to be issues. And then that question comes in, are you happy where you're at and who you're with? And if that answer to that question isn't what you wanted to hear, pull the Band-Aid. <laughs> Tear that bitch apart. <laughs> you got to go. El tren se va, güey. Lo tienes que agarrar. Y si tienes maletas, no lo vas a cachar. That was fact. <laughs> that was that was Damn. the best, bro. I'm gonna tell you that was the best Spanglish I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, though, bro. These, I love these you. are my guys that I'm supposed to trust with my life. They're making fun of me every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna <laughs> sit here and drink water. You know, water from these water. balls. I make fun of him every fucking day, but you know he knows exactly that I got his back every single fucking day. <laughs> nah, but. Um, did, did everybody answer that question? Yeah, Y'all feel good did. on that topic? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Continue with the next, next question. <laughs> next. <laughs> All right. So I believe the last one, oh, I kind of resembles. One, the last question that we got today was the difference between love and costumbre. That's Spanglish for you. So what is it? Love and, and habits? Mm. The difference between love and... and Love habits, you can call it habits, habits? costumbre, yeah, yeah, habits. Yeah, I feel like like good or bad habits. I feel like if you're, so yeah, I I do agree. I'm not sure if it was, that was a question either, but love can be blinded or it could mesh together with good or even bad habits too. Just because it's like I I, I believe love is like a drug, right? Like mm. like once you start, I'm not saying take drugs, but. I don't do drugs. <laughs> but drugs are king I mean, of the thing, right? This is great. No to drugs for this my Showing life. affection, being a, uh, uh, receiving love can be addicting as well, right? X. But also just being neglected as well, too. That it's, it's just a pattern. Like that, Those bad habits or good habits are going to stick together. And if you don't feel that love and you're just receiving bad habits, it's just going to be a never-ending cycle. Like It's just going to be toxic relationships. I like that. I love that. Anybody else? <clears throat> it's confusing the question. No, I think I think he summed it up pretty well. Um, sometimes you do get blinded, or I said confused about habits and what you love. 
Because you can do so many things, you know, back to back that it becomes a habit. And you can like something back to back that it becomes love. So that's two confusing things at once. You know? So at one point, you you lose yourself in the point where, like, do I love this or is it just becoming a habit? Facts. You um, know? And you have to step back and see if I can withdraw from this. Am I happy or not, you know? So does it affect me emotionally, physically, and mentally to the point where, like, I need this, in another sense, a drug, like he said? Or is it just that I'm living day by day with this that... It's just a habit. It's just, it's it's a custom, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's your daily routine, you know, like... Well, it's, it's what it's you know. Happen. It's what you're comfortable with. Let me, let me ask you this question. Do you believe in love? Who are you asking? You. I'm like, shit, I'm looking out. He was like, I I saw him stare at me, and I'm like, nah. I'm looking at you talking to him. He's trying to deflect the question to me, and I'm walking out. I'm asking Jose. Mr. Bucket Hat? I'm asking Pepe. I'm asking Pepe. Hey, hey, hey. I'm asking you personally, brother. Do you believe in love? I haven't found love. But I want to find love. So, yes. My answer to that is yes. Mm. I feel like everybody craves love, you know? Just that's a problem. find your person. Exactly. That's, Hence that's, why I believe in it. Yeah. This guy over here. <laughs> there it is. No, yes. I believe. I, I believe in it. I want it. Yeah. I feel it's going to come when the time is right. Yeah. But that's it. So it is. Um, um, I, I feel like... Not no disrespect to you. I feel like no, you yeah, don't have to look for love or like chase for love. I feel like love will come to you. Yeah, like if you keep doing you, you're gonna vibrate that good energy that and that person will see that. Yes, obviously putting yourself out there is, is a good thing too, but yeah. like going and chasing for that is I feel like it's better to just do you be that good person that you are and that love's gonna come to you instead of the other way around. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion on that. I agree, I agree with you with that. Hundred percent, because if you chase something, the more you chase something, it's gonna run away from you. You know. Oh, that was exactly good. The that more was good. That was good. I'll give. I'll the give more you out. chase love, it's gonna I'm run gonna chase away it. from you. So I'll chase it. <laughs> like he said, the more you do you, the more you attract instead of chase. It's gonna come to you, and it's gonna come to you at the moment where you least expect it, but at the moment where you mostly need it. You know, to yeah, answer your question, it's like my parents showed me love. I know you guys did a little uh, parent segment, yeah. but my parents showed me love in many ways. But I feel like my mom's like a really, really great example of like how a mom should be, how a wife should be, and how just a good person should be because she does so much. So, like, yeah, I do believe in love. Just to answer your question. <laughs> wow. Wait, should you call your mom right now? <laughs> We all call is, your mom, is your mom your Dad best friend, like too? Dome, bro, cleaning. <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, uh, that's cleaning. Saturday cleaning. Don't say that, because my mom will go, too. <laughs> I, I want to hear that Salvadorian accent. Let's go. I know. Shout out. Shout out to El Salvador. Oh, I, you. Oh, yeah. 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 He's allergic to love. <laughs> allergic to love. That's crazy, bro. I thought we were cool. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't take my allergy pill and I came out. Get I, you some Tums. <laughs> some Tums? Hey, you got some Zyrtec, bro. Hey, you got Zyrtec. some Tums? Hey, you got Tums? Hey, you got Tums? Hey, you got Tums? Hey, These are good, bro. These are chewable, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, guys. Hey, 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 everybody hey. has that one friend in the group that is either has allergies, is, is allergies. sensitive to everything. I'm lactose has an intolerant. Opinion about everything. We happen to have it with We this happen one to guy. have all that in one right there <laughs> with the bucket hat. I need my Tums. I need my uh, lactose intolerant pills. I need Bro, my needs allergy this, the pills. The wind to be perfect. I need my painkillers. What else? Damn, the moon's the full moon. moon. <laughs> all right, guys. Here, here we are. Last segment. Last part. Each one starting from Dylan. Coming this way, hit us with the motivational Sheesh. ending, bro. Let's go. Uh, I think I've, I think if I'm not wrong, I think I've said this one. But if I uh, mean, let me tell you this: talking to the the younger version of you, Vegas. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You had to hit me with that question, yo. Valiste verga, güey. Ah, shit. Valiste verga, cabrón. Um, shit. Talking to the younger version of me. Sir. Um, my allergy's kicking in. Um, talking. <laughs> Why y'all laughing, yo? Zer- Zertek <laughs> hit us up, dog. No, it's, a, it's Allegra. Allegra, the one that hits. Cause or if you, if you see the back label of it, it has 127 milligrams. Okay. Of oh, okay, okay. Oh. All right, all right, all right. Um, to talk to my younger self. What age exactly? What do you say? <laughs> Seven and a half. <laughs> Stop whacking the motherfucker. No, 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 no. I'm just like, I'm just hey, like, hey, nah. seven, huh? hey, 16, 17 year old you. 16, 17 year old. That mean I was barely a kind of like freshman, you can say? Means you were 17. <laughs> fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> He's like, fuck. All right. Um, shit. You're pretty, boo, porque no mames. 17 years old on a Wednesday. 16, 17. That means you mean I'm 17, um, bro? That means I am. Um, that means you're 17. <laughs> Bro, I can't take a piss. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Uh, all right, all right. Um, talking to a seven, 16, 17 year old myself. I'm sweating. Um, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Hey, no, 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 yo, no, um, talking to, what? Well, I'm just, I'm gonna skip that part, but, uh, asking your question would be, you ain't shit in this fucking world until you prove everyone and yourself that you are who you say you are and you walk the, the walk and you talk that talk, homeboy, you know? It was aggressive. Yeah. Mm. Damn. Heavy. Ah, that's right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the, the, the pop, the vein popping on this side. <laughs> Everybody thinks they are, but can you prove it? Exactly. So <laughs> you can talk all you want. You can say all you want. You can walk all you want. But if you're improving shit, you're just another motherfucking statistic in this fucking world, <laughs> y'all. Why the fuck are you laughing, yo? Yeah, I'm here trying to be inspiration. All these motherfuckers are laughing. (laughs) See, this this is why this is why I tried jumping off the bridge at the Tanner Freeway. Hey, hey, yo, nah, nah, nah. I'm just playing. Ah, I'm on the social media. The trend is no. I think I bullshit. Bullshit aside. Bullshit aside. The only one that has seen me with. The, the, <laughs> the only one that has seen me when like fucking seven veins popping out of my fucking face is, is my trainer here. Oh, Bro, I was lifting like oh, fucking 120 dude, pounds on bench. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Woo! That's just serious. All right, all right. That'd be motivational talking to a younger you. <sighs> Shit. That's crazy. The sooner you stop allowing people to use you and realize your self-worth, the sooner you appreciate yourself in life. I love that. I love that, bro. I like that. All right. It's the roids. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Mr. Drink Two hey, Guns. He's not on that. Mr. Drink Two Guns. He's on that. Mr. Drink two guys on water and still not have enough. I, if, I was, if, water. I, if I was your height, I would have legs like you too, Phil. Bro, you're like <laughs> <laughs> taller than me, like half an inch. Shots. <laughs> <laughs> <He's a half laughs> <half inch. laughs> guy. Hey, a half an inch makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, 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 yo. <laughs> Every centimeter counts. What? <laughs> Every centimeter counts. He said. <laughs> All right, Jose. Oh. All right, give give us. The best motivational thing you have heard that has helped you throughout your journey. It's crazy. It's like out and down. But I feel like the the one that's like a no brainer that that I don't have to think about because I've heard so many. I've had the opportunity to talk to so many great people and like entrepreneurs themselves. It's 
don't wait for the perfect opportunity. Make the opportunity happen for yourself. Like, just take action. Just take action and just be better. It's like, yeah. it may be a toxic thing to tell yourself that, but at least for me, that's just, just what keeps me going. I like, I may be a little bit workaholic too, but just be better. Uh, don't wait for the perfect opportunity to happen. Make the opportunity happen. I like that. That's going to be a quote for the whole week right there too. Right? All right. It's all about self-talk. Talk to yourself, motivate yourself, love yourself. It, it Really just wake up and do it. Everybody thinks it, everybody hopes for it, but nobody reaches for it. Just go for it. Be hungry. Be hungry and do it. Just stop fucking thinking about it and do it. You're never going to be ready. Just do it. Facts. Speaking of, speak, piggyback on homeboy. Just do it. Piggy, piggy, piggyback <laughs> Just on do homeboy. It. Are, you, are you a motherfucking dreamer or are you an achiever? Because everyone out here can motherfucking dream. Everyone out here dreams every single night about their goals, but are, are you going to achieve them? Are you really going to say what the fuck you're going to do every single day? Are you going to get up at 7 in the fucking morning? Seven, Make bitch, five. that's late. Make it five. That's late. That's late. That's late. That's late. Yo. <laughs> Yo. I'm up hey. by five. <laughs> my God. I'm speaking about the general population out there. You know, goddamn. Hey. Hey, we don't sleep. We don't sleep. <laughs> hey. Like, bro, that's late. <laughs> hey. If you have a dream, make sure you go out there. You get after it. You, de- you let nobody interfere with that, with that vision. Nobody. Whether it's your... Significant other, your friends, family, it is what it is. You go out there and you go get yours. Because at the end of the day, you're the only one going to sleep in that bed. And the only one putting those shoes in the morning. And if you ain't happy with it, bro, you have an issue. Better face it because it's only on you and on you. That's right, homeboy. I'm going to run through a wall. I'm going to run through a wall right now. Hey, Toast of Life podcast. We never miss a Monday. We don't fake this. We are who we are. Love us, hate us, but we love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Subscribe. Remember, we always Follow. remember to subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> like. Repost. Comment. Yes, sir. Watch our recent video with Homeboy. It's, it's going to be good. Trust me. Yeah. If, if you're watching this, make sure you go back. Watch the Abner one. Watch the vlogs. Hey. Watch, follow everybody that's on here. Tag. And if you take any of this out of this podcast, after this motivational uh, segment we just had, Call your loved one. Tell them how much they mean to you. And I promise you, it's going to heal a lot of stuff in your child. Exactly. There's Tomorrow's my promise, though. Yes, sir. We out of here. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>